him the spirit without measure. Father, I don't have nothing of my own. Uh, if you don't give me nothing, I would stand here like a fool before your people. But I know I've witnessed the move of your spirit. I know how your spirit operates. So I'm praying that you'll give me something that will be relevant as it relates to this conference that is being put on. And we ask these blessings in the name of your holy and righteous son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I got a couple of scriptures. This is going, we just going, whatever the spirit do. They that worship the most high must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. I heard that many times, but I never fully understood what it meant. Here's another scripture. Strong men belong to them who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. The sixth chapter of Hebrews. Therefore, let us leave the principles, the ABC principles of the doctrine of Christ, the laying on the hands, the baptism of things, and let us go on and grow to maturity, to greater things. This we will do if the Most High permits. As a young man coming up in church, I am as much of a Christian as anybody that had laid claim to the word. I was brought up in church. I was born in church. I was raised in church. I knew what the word said. One experience that I understood that came from church that, that, that we had is that we had spirit. How do I know? As a young man, after I lost everything, even though I was in church, we knew what it was like to cry, to feel the spirit, to move by the spirit. But we didn't have nothing to make our life change. So we would leave church and do the same thing over and over and over again. Until one day, the most I had enough. He said, you're missing something, son. You know how to sing, you know how to dance, you know how to shout, you know how to cry, you know how to do all the right things spiritually. Something caused your life to fall apart. And I ran in church one day like this. <laughs> and I cried like a baby. And I told the Lord if he didn't raise me up, I wasn't going to get up. I was going to die in that condition. That was something spiritual that took place at that moment. I started to understand what the most high was meaning. They that worship me must worship me in spirit. You see, I mean, many, many of us are in truth, and we can worship in the spirit. We in church, we can worship in the spirit. But we have a problem receiving truth. Come on now. You see? So I've been through everything that was going through in church. Here's what these scriptures start coming into play. Okay, now the truth is, what is the truth? Thy righteousness in Psalms. 119 verse 142. Thy righteousness is everlasting righteousness, and thy law is true. I understood that the law would build walls up and frame me and give me some sense of direction as to what to do, what not to do. That I didn't just keep saying, oh, Jesus, please have mercy on me and forgive me, and turn around and do the same thing over and over again and become a misuser of grace and then keep hanging the Messiah back upon the cross for the same reason. These things I understood as I came the church, just like many of the other brothers. Many of us have come out of church. What is that? I don't say that Christianity was something bad. According to Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 64, and the Lord shall scatter thee from among all people, from one end of the earth to the other. There you shall serve other gods which would be represented by wood and by stone. There were constructs that the Father's people, as they lost their heritage and lost their identity, slavery would be sent into a land that they knew not and experienced things and be totally separated completely from what they knew as a people. The ox knows his master, the jackass knows his master's script, but my people, they don't know who they are. So when you start dealing with truth, you have to be able to identify but who is it that this Bible is talking about that don't have no clue of who they are. It has nothing to do because the church, the church that we understood as a people is not the so-called paganistic, heathenistic thing that brothers were learning about through their information. The Most High preserved our people that was in church because he put his spirit in them. And he said, I'll put my spirit in them and I'll preserve them until the appointed time I raise them up and then I'll connect that spirit with truth and they that worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth. What is the truth? The truth is that there was a people on the planet that said, I will cause you to discontinue from 
from the ashes I gave you, and you will serve your enemies in a land that know that you know not. What is the truth? The truth is the Messiah, Luke 21st chapter. And when you see these things happening, know that your destruction is near, you shall fall by the edge of the sword, then you, you should, shall be led as captives into all nations as slaves. What is the truth? The truth is that, that you would go into slavery with slave ships and that you would be sold on auction blocks and no man would buy you. The truth is we would have no knowledge. The truth is crafty counsel would be taken against a particular people on earth. They would forget that their name was Israel. And the most high said by the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 28 chapter 11 verse through stammering lips and a born speech will I speak to my people. I don't care. You see, this is the truth. And these are some of the things that in the Christian church we learn how to worship in spirit. Right. But we have a problem receiving the rest of the truth that will connect us to who we were. Henceforth, it prompted us to this, and I'm going to go sit down. We say, Jesus, or Yahshua, sacrificed his life for our sins. Do we not? Yeah. Ask yourself this question. Why did he do it? Because when you can deal with that question right there, you will understand that he sacrificed his life for people that have been completely disconnected from everything they had because they had purpose. What was the responsibility? Hmm. When they came out of Egypt, Exodus 18 chapter, verse 3 through 6, speak to the children of Israel. Tell them that they hear them and do all to hear them to my word. Diligent, they shall be to be a kingdom of priests unto all the nations. Oh, no. That was our responsibility as a people. Yes, that we didn't hate the nations. We fell into these things because we did not do what the Most High instructed us to do. And that is why there is no assault on the brother that called himself a Christian because the church preserved us. He kept us connected to the book that was in Hallelujah. If it Hallelujah. The church, we would know nothing about the uh, We would know nothing about the Messiah. If it was not through the stammering lips and the born speech of the English language, that the Bible was pretty in, we wouldn't know nothing about that sure I'm a Shia, because the English word Jesus is what connected us to that. That is our responsibility as a people. And we know that the Spirit of the Most High is with us according to Mark Malachi 3 and 6. I am the Lord, I don't change. I made it for him a promise. I made him a promise that in him every person on the planet will have an opportunity to be blessed as Israel went out and start teaching the nation. He said, therefore, nobody will be able to sue us. But we've been through everything. Let's think about that. The Most High didn't put a spirit of hate in us as a people. He put a spirit of righteousness in us as a people. And when you look at Christ, Christ said, I come to restore the house of Israel. But there is another fold that is outside of Israel that's coming in. Look at the bridge, baby. You look at it. Because for my Hebrew brothers, if you just think that God only loves you, you sadly mistaken. Man, come on. And for my Christian brothers, if you think that you can walk into the presence of the Most High with just spirit while you reject the truth, you are sadly mistaken.